Yeah. 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 I think Disney's going right down that same pace, looking what Netflix does, and said that's a very powerful model, and we want to emulate that. And Warner Media is looking at that, and saying Absolutely. this is a very powerful model. We want to emulate this too. And so there's a lot of control. The larger content owners are trying to rest, and you know, it's, it's, and it's then I want to get you in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about data earlier because you work for guys like LG and T-Mobile who are data freaks, mm -hmm. and they're also kind of like, you know, they're looking. At, they don't have huge content budgets. Right. right. So data, what does data do for that in the limitation of such? Well, first of all, I, I think the OTT space in general is lagging behind, say, the, uh, the YouTubes of the world as far as what kind of data they're exposing to their content creators. Um, so there's that piece of it. The other bucket, when you have an ADOD platform, is addressable advertising. It's, it's one of the big opportunities in the OTT space uh, versus traditional TV and that I can uh, figure out who this user is and market specifically to them. I think in 2018 it was, there's two billion dollars in advertising in the OTT space. 800 million of that uh, was addressable and that's going to continue to increase. And so what you, you had the- So what's addressable for them? Oh, um, if you, any of you use Instagram? <laughs> Uh, every time you're going on Instagram and you see something you've just talked about or something you purchased that's being marketed directly to you, that's because Facebook knows exactly who you are. Uh, so what we need to do in the OTT space is catch up uh, as far as addressable advertising goes. And then suddenly, it's not as awful to get an ad. So it, it, it's, it helps from a content standpoint as, as well in, in, in engagement, where suddenly you're getting ads that are germane to your life. Uh, and rather than, you know, I think Aflac was used before as something you get hammered with, uh, uh, Geico, Geico you get hammered with on OTT platforms, things like that. So what we need to do is make, uh, from a data standpoint, addressable advertising, take advantage of that opportunity in the OTT space. And then on the content side, um, there are some OTT platforms that offer users a dashboard, but a lot of OTT platforms do not. And it doesn't need to even be that, um, that ornate a data set. It can simply be around engagement on a summary level uh, and then on an asset level. And that helps the, uh, the, the partner that we're working with, uh, whether it's NBC Universal, whether it's <coughs> any, or whether it's, you know, Jukin, who is, I don't know if any of you know them, but they're one of the, these digital partners that's very successful in the OTT space. Um, to understand how their uh, programming needs to evolve in order to create longer and longer engagement times on OTT platforms. And so I think we can do better, uh, and there is a huge opportunity if we do better on both the ad and on the, the programming side. All right, so we've been, is this like boring for you? No. <laughs> like, let, let me just say this, like, we usually when we get content creators, you know, you're like, okay, can we just talk about our movie? And our, I got this great concept of TV show, a treatment I just wrote. Um, every time you go up against your content to sell it to a network, to a digital student, to Snapchat, to anybody, data becomes your best friend. And usually you don't have it, and usually they do. So if you can start, as you do, start doing your content creation and start figuring out, okay, how do I prove what my audience is? How do I prove that? That improves your budget, what you get funded at, if you can own some rights long term. There's a whole bunch, you know, this, this business is like real estate, right? You can have nothing or you can have a lot, and it's the same deal. So anyway, I don't, so we're not boring you with data just to talk about data, right? We're talking about data and blockchain and AI and all these things because it's how you make money and how you get your leverage when you're doing content creation. And can someone add to this? Yeah, put another way. Um, so we're selling a show now, and I had this idea, and I went to the production company I worked with, and I said, you're doing, I think we should do this. And then so we had a couple of you know, like probably three or four meetings, and then um, the owner said, all right, let me call CAA and see what they think. And CAA took it out, and people were immediately super receptive to both of what you're saying. What I would say is data has always been there, it's just you didn't know what it was, and you didn't know how it was working for you or working against you. If you have an agent in, in 
on some unscripted niche, that agent, if they're any good, they know everything that is sold, everything that is not sold, who the buyers are. Their head is an analog repository of all of that data. So data is not new. It's just the ability for content creators to actually get a piece of it and begin to use it effectively in creating their show or whatever. That's the new part. So I don't think you, if you really, I, I mean, like, I would hurdle towards that, like, try and understand.